We're getting ready to start a discussion of the last of the data structures we're going to study in this course. We're going to talk a little bit today about priority queues and heaps. Back when I was teaching you computer science A, we learned about this data structure called an array list. And we learned that the library, the Java library, has an array list built in. And so we were able to use the array list, uh, show you everything that the array list could do. And we studied the array list in CSA without really knowing how the array list was implemented. We just kind of used it as a black box. It was it served our purposes. It was like a fancier version of arrays. We're going to do a similar thing here. We're going to learn how to use a priority queue. And we're not going to really talk, at least initially, about how the priority queue is built. It's built using a heap, by the way. But we're going to put that aside for a moment. And we're just going to learn how to use the priority queue as a black box. Now, it turns out that the priority queue is a class similar to the way the array list is a class already existing in the Java libraries. So the only thing we really have to do is summon the priority queue and use it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're also going to discuss what does a priority queue do. So let me start off by showing you a brief video. And this video can be found in your textbook. And here we are in our data structure sec section of our textbook. And you can see we're sadly at the last of our data structure units, which is priority queues and heaps. And we're going to look at this video right here for a second. This video, I believe, by the looks of it, was made by a guy named William Fiset, who I believe is now a Google engineer. But he's a famous computer scientist who does some great videos on data structures. And I'm actually going to skip ahead here and go over to this part right here. And I want you to imagine that you have a giant container, a container, and it contains these billiard balls. And these billiard balls have these numbers on them. And what we want to do is we want to ask the, the container to hand us one of these items. Now, we're going to assume that the container, oops, we're going to assume that the container is a priority queue. Now, right now, where we, as we start processing the priority queue, it's already got these billiard balls inside of it. And we're going to go through and, and run these commands that you see here. And we're going to try to figure out what is the behavior of this priority queue. So the poll is something that we use to take an item that's at the head of the queue and remove it. Now you notice that whereas we had written previous queues together in sort of some sort of regimented order where it was clear which was at the beginning of the queue and which was at the end of the queue, it's more of like a free-for-all here. You can see the balls are just sort of floating in space. And what we're going to say about our priority queue is that it's either going to be a min priority queue or a max priority queue. And for this example, we're going to assume it's a min priority queue. By the way, in Java, if you don't specify otherwise, the default priority queue is also a min priority queue. And what that means is that smaller numbers have higher priority over larger numbers. And so what's happening here is that when we do a pull command, it's going to give us the billiard ball that has the highest priority. OK, uh, Ms. Mila, can you tell me, if I pull the queue right now, which billiard ball is it going to give me? It's going to be the number one. So let's see that happen here. You can see that the, that the one is down here behind my cursor. You can see these other things are here. Now the next command we're going to do is we're going to add a two to the queue. Now previously, when we had a regular queue, when we added the two, it would go to the end of the queue. Here it just kind of joins the mishmash of other billiard balls, and it's going to just be added somewhere randomly in here. So you're going to be tempted to try and figure out what the underlying structure here is. When I present this for the first time to programmers, their first thought is, all you've done is keep an ordered list here that's been sorted out, and that each time you ask for it, it just gives you the next element. And each time you add a new element, you resort the list. I'm going to explain to you over the next couple of days that that is not an efficient way to maintain this priority queue structure because it takes too many computing cycles to keep the list sorted. We're going to do something slightly different here. We're going to use something called a heap, and we're going to spend a considerable amount of time addressing what that means and why it's so fast.
but let's not worry about that right now, what the underlying structure is. Let's just treat it as a black box to try to understand its behavior. So I've added the two. You can see that the two got added right here. And now I'm going to pull. Now, when I pull here, what's the next billiard ball I'm going to get here, Ms. Teleska? It's going to be the two that I just added because it's the lowest number in here. You can see that the two is right here now. Now I'm going to add a four, and it's going to join this uh, uh, morass here. You can see there was already a four here. This is the other four that I just added. They're using this example to show you that duplicates are perfectly OK. And now we're going to pull. And my question is, is the four that we've just added going to come right out now, Mr. Adil? The three is going to come out next. And you can see that the three came out next, right here. You can see the three came out. And now we're going to add a five and a nine. So here I've added the five. And here I've added the nine. And now we're going to use a loop to pull the rest. And I'd like you to take out a piece of paper now and just indulge me. I know it's really easy, but I want you to write down what is the sequence that the billiard balls will come out on. Very good, sir. So it's basically this sequence that Mr. Afsari has just mentioned. So once again, we haven't discussed how the, the uh, queue is maintained and stored. We just see how it works. And you can see that in its basic structure here, the performance of the priority queue is extremely easy to understand. Despite this, the priority queue can be a great help in building algorithms. In fact, there are two algorithms that we have already discussed where the priority queue could have been used instead of some of the code that we had written. The priority queue, you implement the queue interface, so you can peek if you want to. Prims. Uh, sir, I believe a prims could be done with priority queue. I hadn't been thinking about that one, but now that you mentioned it, that might be priority queueable. What else? Dijkstra can be implemented with a priority queue. There's another one that we studied for a single day. It was Huffman coding. Can you see how Huffman coding could use a priority queue? I think you can. OK, so you can see that the priority queue can be really useful as an aid to a larger algorithm. Priority queues are rarely used by themselves for the entire algorithm. They're usually like a, a, an assistive tool for building a larger algorithm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at Java's priority queue and how to use it, the one that's in the library already. Let's have a look. We want to create a priority queue. So what do you think is the name of the class we will be summoning here, Mr. Basu? I think in this case, it's just going to be priority queue. We'll use integers for our example. Historically, the letters P, Q are usually associated with the priority queue, but of course, you can call it anything. And it's contained in the Java utility library. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some numbers to the priority queue. To, and just to prove to you that we can handle duplicates, I'll put another four in there. I'm sorry, I changed my mind. Let's create a while loop to keep pulling the queue and print out the elements one at a time. Please work with your partner to see, without looking up anything, if you can figure out. OK, let's run it. And you can see that the priority queue gives them to us from lowest to highest. Lower numbers have higher priority. Now I'm going to show you how to convert the queue so that it is has reverse priority. Now, to have reverse priority, I need to insert something in here. And what I want to know is, what do you think the queue takes as an argument that will let me override its existing priority? It's something we learned all the way back in the first week of school. See if you can discuss with your partner, what does it need? It needs to know how to order two things to know which one comes first and which one comes second. What do we call those things in, in our data structures course? Comparator. We need a comparator. Comparable is uh, something we would inherit from comparators or objects we can create. Now, you have two choices. You can create a custom comparator, but reversing the queue is so frequent that they have a co comparator built in to the collections interface that you can just reuse. It is called collections reverse order. Uh, it didn't work on me for this particular situation for some strange reason. Normally, I get that impact. That was a new feature I think they've added this year. Anyway, there you go. Now, what do you think is going to be the order? Let's try it, run it, and see what happens. 
you can see I've reversed the order now. Higher, higher numbers have higher priority now. So just so you know, the original order here, the original order that I had where lower numbers have higher priority, that's called natural order. Natural order means left to right on the number line. So natural order is lowest to highest. Reverse order is highest to lowest. So that's how a priority queue works. So now we have the basics of a priority queue. I want to make it clear, I'm going to give you an assignment now. This is not the end of class. This assignment should take you only a few minutes to do, maybe like 20. I'm going to give you five priority queue problems to run through right now. That's, oh, sorry, four. Do these four problems right now. They're part of pr uh, practice it. You can work on them alone or with a partner. You should be able to tear through these because we're just using the priority queue and any other data structures right from the library. We're not doing anything sophisticated. If you want to build your own custom comparator, you can use this particular constructor call for the priority queue. This initial capacity can be anything. You might want to just set it to some number like 16 or something like that. And then you supply the comparator here either as a lambda or as an anonymous inner class object. If for any reason you don't want to use, if for any reason you don't want to use the one in the library, you can also write your own custom comparator like the one shown here. This one is taken from Geeks for Geeks.